Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar and welcome today to the sales workshop. We're so excited to get started. We had an awesome first day. And if you joined us, we hope you had fun too. And now we're into day two and we are super excited for this webinar, this session here today as well. Um, but before I introduce our presenter, Dave Pope, I do want to quickly introduce myself. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Stephanie Grice and I am uh, the senior client champion in education coordinator here at Travify. Um, but we also have Scott Rutz um, on the back end as well, ha helping to gather questions. So if you see him reply to anything, he's back there helping us out as well. Um, but before we get started um, with the presentation today, I do want to quickly give you an overview of Travify Academy and what to expect. So if this is your first time joining us in Travify Academy, we are super Pumped to have you here today and we thank you for joining us if this is not your first time i say this every time but apologies you're going to hear this spiel one more time um but we just always like to tell you what to expect during this webinar um so travify academy is a free educational resource to further travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals so our team has a privilege to work with thousands of amazing travel advisors and organizations daily and have partnered with many of these industry experts and thought leaders to bring you powerful content and educational webinars to help you grow your business. So it's important to note that these webinars are not commercial in nature to specifically promote any of our industry speakers, including Travify, in which Travify Academy does not focus on Travify's products. So. With that being said, thanks for joining the Travify Academy webinar. And you can always find um, this webinar, past webinars, other content on academy.travify.com. So before I introduce Dave though, really quick, I do just wanna quickly share a couple housekeeping things. Um, this is the first session of day two in the sales workshop. So if you want to join us for the next session, um, which will be at, I believe it's at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, so that'll be the last one of the sales workshop. And if you do wanna join that, make sure that you register for that. Um, you can register for it online at academy.travify.com. Um, the other thing that I want to note as well is that you're going to receive a recording afterwards of this session, and you can always check out all the other sessions online as well. We have all of them recorded, so if you have to hop off early, no worries. You'll automatically receive a recording after this webinar is over, um, so you can watch it again or share it with friends or colleagues as well. The last thing I want to mention too is that um, we plan to have some time at the end for a Q&A um, with Dave. So feel free, there's a question panel or a question option in your GoToWebinar panel that you can use and we can uh, hopefully get to those later on. But now, the moment we've been waiting for, introducing Dave Pope here. So Dave is a travel industry veteran of over 25 years. He's experienced a progressive career rising from commission-based sales to director level positions with some of the UK's leading travel organizations. He has also been involved in business startup and transformation through effective training and consultancy, as well as e-learning technology. So Dave, thanks for joining us here and all the way from the UK. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. That made me feel really old, that introduction, but uh, I'm sure I must have started when I was very, very young. Well, you are an expert in, you're an industry veteran, so yeah. that's why, and so we know that you are going to know exactly what you're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely right. I think I've, I've been involved in pretty much uh, most um, aspects of the travel industry, as you said, right from the very beginning, selling holidays to startups, uh, developing businesses both online and uh, in the real world, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. And and thank you so much again. We're really excited to, to listen into this presentation and I will just let you take it away from here. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for sparing some time today. Now, if you are in the US and Canada, good morning. If you're in Europe, good afternoon. And if you're in Australia, then you probably really should be asleep. But if you're up, well done, great effort. So today I'm gonna to tell you about um, improving your sales flow. So I'm gonna give you five, my five top tips that will help you develop and bring in more sales in travel. But first, there's a couple of things I need to set the scene with first before I start talking about the sales flow. 
First of all, um, as Stephanie said, I've been in the industry in the industry a long time, and one of the biggest, uh, most popular things I hear from people who work in travel is that I'm not a salesperson, as if working in travel means you don't have to sell anything. So it's the biggest thing over the years. I'm not a salesperson. It's as if sales is considered a bad thing. I think sometimes people's perception of working in sales is associated to other industries. And it's a little bit pretentious sometimes in the travel industries. Well, I work in travel, but I'm not a salesperson, as if it's a bad thing. So the first thing I really, and this isn't one of the top tips, this is setting the scene. What I must say at the beginning is that everybody is a salesperson, whether we're working in travel, whether whatever industry we're working in, or whether we're working with family, friends, children, we're always trying to influence, always trying to persuade in the right way. So let's agree first up that we're all salespeople. And if we go into that a little bit more detail, and again, I'm not even near the first um, top tip yet. Also, what we have to agree is sales, the exchange of goods for money. So again, some people think that sales is a bad word. Is that I can't sell, I can't sell, I can't ask for the business. Sales is exactly a function. So sales is the last thing that you do, or one of the last things you do in a sales flow or in a sales process. So at some stage, people will give you some money, hopefully, and we know in travel, they're not gonna get the goods straight away. It might be a year ahead or might be six months ahead. So again, let's just agree. First of all, we're all salespeople and sales is exchange of goods for money. There's a lot of things that we do within a sales flow that contributes towards winning a sale or closing a sale, but it's something we have to work on right from the beginning. So those are the first two things that I wanted to get straight and on the table before we start looking at my top tips. And again, just following on with what we've been saying, you may have seen this phrase, uh, it's not mine, but it's one I believe in, in a lot, is that selling is a transfer of feelings because you're selling something that they can't actually see. You're selling a holiday, you're selling travel, a flight or a hotel. You can't actually, it's not like, not, not like selling a car where you can test drive it before you go. We're selling something that they can't, the customer cannot see, they cannot try before they buy. And we have to transfer the feelings that we have. Well, first of all, we need to create the feelings and transfer them to the customer. And this is really important in selling travel. It's very different than selling a car or selling a house, selling a pair of shoes. As if you sell a house, you, you can go in it, you can look at it and feel it. And again, as I said with a car, you can drive it. You don't buy a car online and you don't buy a house online, but people do buy travel online. So selling or sales is a transfer of feeling. All right, let's get to my first top tip. Number one, my top tip, maybe it's something you weren't expecting, but number one is the way we communicate. The way we communicate with our customers is absolutely key to the success that we may or not get at the end. So I've been on a bit of a crusade recently or over the last year or so. Because a lot of people, I mean, let's, let's face it, the world has changed. My, both my children have iPads and mobile phones. They text, they WhatsApp, they email, Facebook Messenger. And this has taken over our lives. People don't talk anymore. So I've been on a bit of a, uh, a crusade, as I said, over the last year or two to try and get people talking. If you try and close a sale by email or WhatsApp or, or Facebook Messenger, and people do, people try and have conversations with customers online. But what that lacks is feeling. It lacks feeling, tonality. 
and you can't transfer a feeling by email. You can send a document by email. That's great. Email's great for sending a document, an attachment, but an email isn't any good for asking somebody if they want to close, if you, sorry, if somebody wants to buy a WhatsApp message, a Facebook message, or even a, a text message. And the reason that a lot of salespeople, especially in travel, use this is because they're afraid of picking up a telephone. Or now, let's be honest, this year, 2020, to Zoom is a popular thing. So my first tip, my first tip today is think about the way you communicate at certain stages of the sales flow. First of all, if you're just about to send that email or before you're about to send that email, pause and think about what better effect you will have on your customer by picking up the telephone. And by the way, that's not a picture of me in my early days in the travel agents although it's probably about the same sort of age. First thing is pick up the telephone, tonality, feeling. If someone sends you an email, somebody sends you a message or a WhatsApp, try and pick up the phone, the first stage. It's so much more effective. Not people don't want to do it these days. A lot of people don't like talking on the telephone because it's easy to send an email. The other thing, as I said, nowadays, and this is still what I'm calling a revolution of communication as we go back to the days before we had internet, the days before we had mobile phones, when we had to pick up the phone. When I started in travel many years ago, we had to use the phone. We would advertise in a newspaper and people would phone us or they'd come and see us. We didn't have no other option. So the revolution that I'm trying to create in travel is to get talking again. Now this year has been challenging. I was just saying to Stephanie, you know, this year has been a challenging year. And at the beginning of the year, people started to talk over video more. So before January, if I said to somebody, would you like to Zoom? I would have probably got arrested because nine or 10 months ago, people didn't really, or some people did, but not everyone knew what Zoom was. And there are other video communication tools, of course. So when people couldn't go out of their houses, they couldn't go out of their businesses, they started using video to talk not just to their clients, but to their friends and their family. Yeah, you know, I now have a Zoom call with my 85-year-old mum. Now, we haven't stopped doing it just because we can now see each other in person. So my 85-year-old mum knows how to Zoom. But what this has given us now is a real advantage in sales. Because if you can have a video call with your customer, that's the next best thing to meeting face-to-face. -face. The chances of you converting a sale, if you're over the telephone or on a video with your customer, will increase incredibly by those two forms if you try and sell by email or whatsapp it's not going to happen so my first top tip is more video communication more phone and the next stage of that is you can have i don't know 10 20 30 customers on a video call on a webinar that the webinar that we're on now now there's a few hundred people out there uh, watching this webinar but imagine if you could do that with customers, the power that would give you, all of your customers on a webinar. So top tip one, how we communicate. Second top tip is um, really with, uh, with your customers, is really qualifying and understanding or establishing their needs, really understanding what they want. And I think here, sometimes in this industry, we can presume too much. And a lot of the time we presume based on price. We presume that customers want the cheapest possible price. And that's just a race to the bottom. What's really important here, and this is a stage 
So we're actually, and this might sound a bit strange, now we're really starting to close the sale right now. Yes, we have work to do. Find out, and I, I call it a blank sheet of paper approach. I'm talking to my customer, but I need to get them to talk. I need them to talk to me about what it is they want. And we have all the usual questions. And one of the first questions we should always ask a customer is their name. A common courtesy. How can I work with somebody if I don't know their name? And use that name. Not too much. The beginning, the middle, and the end. So what I want to know, and, and customers will know roughly what they want, hopefully, what time of year, how many people, that's fine. But one thing I would ask customers, really good open question, what's important to you? Is there anything that you won't compromise on? And these are really good questions to get the customer thinking. And a really good question, we must, must ask the money question. How much? would you like to spend? I don't know whether you would use this word normally, but the word that I would try and avoid is the word budget. Especially in the UK, the word budget has connotations of cheapness. If you say to someone, what's your budget? It, it, I think it's a different, you get a different feeling than saying, how much would you like to spend? Because it's really important we know these things because when we get to the next stage, it's gonna, gonna really help us. And if you ask, if you were to ask me, are there things that I won't compromise on? And there's some really important things. You know, I must fly from a certain airport in the UK that's near to where I live. There are certain things I want at the airport. I want meet and greet car parking. I want private transfers when I get to my resort. And the hotel, where I stay when I'm on holiday, must have two bedrooms. There's four of us. And there's other things associated with that that I need that are important. So customers don't always think about that until you ask them. And again, we may presume customers are flying economy class. So again, we should never assume that. So stage two, qualify and establish needs. And the type of questions we would ask at this stage are all open questions. What, where, when, who, why, and how. And this is a really important part because also at this stage of the sales flow is that we're building rapport. We're starting to build a relationship with the tone of our voice, the way we're communicating with our customer. And we should never underestimate the power of rapport in sales. I'm sure you have all um, experienced this, is that it's very hard not to buy from somebody you like. Really, really hard. Really hard, and I'll, I'll test that out. Um, so what we're doing here, apart from establishing our customers' needs, is we're really trying to find out what it is they want. So that's stage two. So, so far, stage, uh, now top tip number one was the way we communicate. Top tip number two was really establishing the customer's needs, understanding what it is they want. So stage three, we have all the information that we want. Now it's our job as a travel consultant. I use the word consultant rather than an agent. Presenting your recommendation. Because we're not order takers, we're consultants. Somebody that gets paid for giving professional advice. So based on what you've said, now I'm gonna give you my recommendation for your holiday or for your travel. And again, there's that picture of me again in the top left. Um, so again, this is a really important stage because you may have to pause here. There's nothing wrong with pausing a conversation. So once you've got the information from the customer, I guess you're going to have to do some work now. Now, depending on the complexity of the inquiry, you may need to pause your customer and go and do some work before we come back with a recommendation or a proposal. I try not to use the word quote. I use the word itinerary or proposal or recommendation. Proposal's a good one because 
based on what they've asked, I may come back with a couple of options. So first of all, the way that we, we present a recommendation or a proposal is two ways. If it's something that you have to email, so you'll be working with Travelfy, I'm presuming to create a beautiful itinerary, and why wouldn't you, because it's a great tool, but you can't just send that on its own. It has to come in my mind with a conversation. So I'd be talking to my customer and say, hi, John, it's Dave here. I'm just about to send you your proposal. Spend a little bit of time, a little bit of time looking at it. And when would be a good time for us to talk through it? So the proposal and how wonderful the proposal can look, but it has to come with a, with a phone call. There's a picture of a sandwich on there. You may be wondering what that's for. How we present the pricing is important, especially if we're talking through on a video call or on a phone. A price should never, in my mind, be left cold or a price left hanging because how much something costs is really important, but it must be followed by benefits. And we can do that in one or two ways. One is well, the price is $10,000, and that includes business class flights, five-star hotel, all-inclusive inclusive board bases, and it includes a private driver in Bangkok for the day, only if you're going to Thailand, that is. Also, the way we can present it is what I call a price sandwich, where we give a list of benefits, we then give the cost, and then we have more benefits. An example, of, an example of that would be, okay, John, you're flying at 12 midday on the Friday, business class with Virgin Atlantic. You arrive in uh, Dubai at 3 a.m. in the morning. The total cost of this holiday is $4,500, but it also includes five-star, all-inclusive board bases and a private um, trip out into the sand dunes uh, in the afternoon of the 5th. So the price is in there, but it's surrounded by benefits. Now, customers still need to know the price, but that way it's packaged in ni nicely. The picture of the app on the orange um, reminds me to say that how many options should we give a customer? Some people will say three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as many as they can. There's a famous phrase that says, choice sells, variety confuses. I would generally go with two. And I would, if the customer wants to spend $10,000, I'll find uh, a holiday that would be around that price, as long as they're asking for something realistic. I would also have something that would be a little bit higher than what they've asked for, because that's for two reasons. One, it's what I call a marker. It makes something seem more affordable, but also they may buy it because that that um, proposal that's say eleven thousand dollars may have something wonderful in it. So we may try and tempt them. So two options would be my advice. Never more than two because again it gets a bit confusing. Here's one that is right on what you want to spend. It's got everything you need. But John, I've got to show you this. I've got to show you this. Now, this is an upgrade to first class. It's an amazing offer to, on first class. It's just another $1,000 each. What do you think, John? Now, they may not want that, but if not, you've always got the other one to go back to. So giving your recommendation uh, is, is one of my top tips. And then with uh, the proposal you're, you're giving, make sure it's fully loaded. And what I mean by that, is that if, for example, there's car parking, then it's meet and greet car parking. If there's a transfer from the airport to the hotel, private taxi, air-conditioned taxi. If it's a, a hotel room, then again, don't presume that the customers want a standard room. Sea view room, a balcony room, an apartment. Always offer these type of rooms to enhance the experience. Yes, it may cost more, but the experience will be there too. 
If anyone wants to know that hotel is on the left-hand side, that is a hotel called Kimala in Phuket. And that is a treetop pool villa. One of the most iconic hotels in, in Southeast Asia, Kimala, perfect for honeymoons. So if you have anyone going to Southeast Asia for a honeymoon, Kimala is the place. And also, you know, when we're, we're upselling and, and uh, talking to our customers, so again, we shouldn't presume that they just want to fly economy. Sometimes we can give them the price for business class or premium economy. So make sure your proposal is fully loaded because it's easier to take things off than put things on. And part of that process is putting your customer on holiday. This is the bit where we transfer the feelings. Remember we said at the beginning about selling being a transfer of feelings. Because again, we're selling something that the customer can't see. They can't touch it, they can't see it, they can't drive it. We have to put them on that beach as long as they're going on a beach holiday. Or we're putting them on the slopes if they're going skiing. We're putting them in Rome, looking at the Colosseum. The words that we use to describe travel is important. There are certain words that really shouldn't be in a conversation about travel. We've already talked about the word budget, the word cheap, the word expensive. Those words are subjective, is that cheap and expensive to me is totally different to cheap and expensive for somebody else. So if we're presuming that somebody can't afford something, then we can make a mistake sometimes. We've all seen the pretty woman sketch, I guess. Um, so never ever presume that customers won't spend more money than they thought, if we give them a reason to do that. So the word that we use to describe something, a hotel, a beach, a, a, a tour, an airline, be descriptive. Yeah, this is a, a time for us to be descriptive and really paint a picture. Step four, or oh, my top tip number four, is ask for the business. One of the biggest challenges in the travel industry for as long as I've been working in it, people don't want to ask. And do you know one of the reasons for that is that too many of us are worried about the word no. What if they say no? Well, it means that they're not quite ready to buy. So first of all, stop worrying about the word no. It's not rejection, it's objection. Out of 100 holiday inquiries that you get, 100 won't buy from you. I don't know anyone that has 100% booking conversion. 50%, 60% is great. And even then, 40 still aren't going to buy. So first of all, get away and don't worry about the word no. So if we backtrack, we found out what the customer wants. We've created a beautiful itinerary. We've got a couple of options for them, no more than two. And one of the first things that we must do to move towards asking for the sale is what I call a test close. And that's quite simply, how does that sound, John? What do you think of that proposal? This means the customer has to say something. They can't say yes or no. So what do you think? And this must be done over the telephone or over a video call. And obviously with Travify, like people can agree to buy it with a special button, but for the sake of the presentation, phone and video is best. Because also you have a bit of body language well, on video you have obviously. So how does that sound? And then that will lead on to the next phase of closing. If they say, yes, it sounds great, Dave. Fantastic, would you like to book that now? That's what we call a direct close, direct action. Would you like to book that now? Would you like to book that with me now, right now? The emphasis is on the word now. That's a direct close. The alternative close is we're giving someone a choice. Which one would you like to book, Dave? John, sorry. Which one would you like to book, John? Would you like the, um, the British Airways first class flight 
or would you like to go in business class? Which one would you like? So if we're not saying, would you like to buy? We're saying, which one? Scarcity is the fear of loss or the fear of missing out. And we would use scarcity because we work in an industry where it's, it's limited. We only, have ha we only have so many seats on a plane. We only have so many rooms in a hotel. We don't have an infinitive number of seats. So by using the scarcity rule, it, it creates a little bit more urgency. And I, and I suggest we should be genuine with this. We shouldn't make things up. Would you like to book this now, John? Because I'm a bit concerned about how many seats are left on the plane. I'm a bit worried about how many rooms are left in the hotel because the the sea there are only four sea view rooms in that hotel and i know that was important to you john so we can use scarcity it might be a special offer so there may be a special offer that finishes on the 31st of october i'm sure there are 31st of october this is only valid for a couple of more days john it's really popular i must say and presumptive sometimes can be seen as a little pushy presumptive is not do you want a book how would you like to pay, John? Visa or MasterCard? How would you like to pay? Would you like to spread the cost? So a lot of people don't get to this stage. A lot of people don't get, because they're very happy sending out quotes, and sending out emails with quotes on them, and they're just waiting for customers to come back. A lot of travel consultants I work with have imaginary pipelines. Imagine your pipelines and say, well, yeah, I've got lots of customers that are going to be coming back to me. But they never do. Another phrase I hear that I have lots of inquiries and I have lots of things bubbling under. And I don't know what that means. So get them to this stage, use a test close, and then one or the other. You might have to use two or three of these because we've got another stage to go yet. Again, as a phrase, somebody said once that we don't actually start selling until somebody says no. It's very true. It doesn't mean, I mean, a lot of people, again, we talk about the word no, and I think some people think it's a rejection. It's not rejection. It means I'm just not quite ready. And there are many, many reasons why a customer is not ready to book right at this moment. And we shouldn't presume that they are ready to book right at this moment. So the next top tip, number five, is how do we turn no into a yes? Or how do we turn some no's into a yes? Because some no's are gonna be a no, let's be honest. So we need to deal or handle key objections. There are many, many ways, sorry, many, many different reasons why people can't commit. Here's some examples, the first one. It's more than I want to pay. Now, this should only arise if we haven't established how much somebody wants to spend. So at the beginning of a conversation, if we haven't asked, we haven't had the money question, and we haven't asked how much they want to spend, or sometimes people don't know, let's be honest. It's more than I want to pay. Now, okay, that's a valid objection. How are we going to deal with it? Are we going to go straight in with a discount? No, I don't think so. Again, that's what some people do. Or how about I give you $500 off? Now, that is an option, but that's something we'll keep up our sleeve for the moment. The first thing we were going to do is compromise. And the first question I'll ask is, OK, how much did you want to spend? How much did you want to pay? They may not know. But if they do know, well, I'd rather spend about $5,000. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is compromise. Let's have a look at what we've included for that holiday for $6,000. OK, John, let's see what we can do with this. Now, to get nearer your price point, we could change the hotel, maybe from a five to a four star. Would you like to do that? No, I don't want to go to a four star. OK, we could change from two weeks to 10 days, maybe. That would bring the price down a little bit. 
Or how about we change the room from a sea view room to a car park view? I don't think you'd want that, would you, John? So the first thing we do is compromise and see where we go. And then we'll ask again. So, okay, John, so we can get near your price point, but we're going to have to change the holiday. What would you like me to do? Then hold your nerve. And the next stage is that, well, maybe we can't go the whole way on price, or maybe we can offer a gesture. Now, I can't go the whole way, but how about this? And what I would do is use it as something tangible, like how about I'll include a couple of lounge passes for the airport? How about that? Or maybe we could reduce the price a little bit, but never go the whole way. Compromise is good. And again, if someone makes a gesture and it's someone that you really like, it's very hard not to say yes. So the first one is compromising, not discounting. Sometimes it's cheaper online. I can get this, I can book this online. Yeah, things are cheaper online. But one thing I would say is you don't get me, John, because I've worked with a lot of people this year that booked online, but then when things had to be changed and things went wrong, they had no one to turn to. I've been helping a lot of people that have booked online and now they're my customers. So, you know, hands up. Yeah, it's cheaper online. A lot of things are cheaper online. A lot of industries are cheaper online. I need to talk to someone. I can't make this decision. I need to talk to my partner, my husband, my wife, my partner, the other people I'm traveling with. Absolutely fine. When will you be able to see them? And this is a stage where we make the next move. Great. Why don't you have a talk to them this evening? And what time is a good time for us to have a conversation tomorrow? And what's the best number, John? So again, we're not waiting for them to come back to us. We're taking the initiative and we're going back to them. Date in the diary, we make that call and it has to be a call or a video call. Remember the first tip. So we just recap a little bit and I do have a bonus tip for you in a minute. First of all, the way we communicate, really, really important. Second, spending some time establishing the customer's needs. Really, really key that we do that. Next stage is presenting your recommendation. I mean, your recommendation is unique to you because you're the travel expert. Next stage, making sure that we ask for the sale ask for the sale and we've already got a plan that we know where we're going to take the customer if they say no we've already got those sound bites in our mind we're not going to worry about the word no it's a small word and then dealing or turning that no into a yes having the bravery to embrace the rejection sorry not the rejection Re to embrace the objection and also to realize that not everyone buys. Not everyone buys. It's just sometimes it's just not right today. Which brings me to this slide that there are three conclusions to a, uh, a sales um, inquiry, conversation. One, number one in red is that the customer buys from you. Yeah, customer buys for you. That's what we want. Number two in blue, number two is the customer still travels, but they buy from a competitor. If they're buying it from a competitor, then you should know why. It would normally be one of three things, price, proposition, or person. If they don't buy from you, it'll be one of those three things. And number three in yellow is they don't travel. So there are three conclusions to an inquiry. One, they buy from you. Two, they buy from someone else. And three, they don't travel. There isn't a force, don't look for it. One, two, or three. I said I'd have a bonus tip. I know I said I'd only have five, but I've got a bonus tip. Number six, very underestimated. Oh. 
Oh, Dave, really quick, I think we lost your sound there. Nope, not hearing yet. Good old technology. <laughs> Can't hear yet. It looks like your um, your audio is turned on, but I just can't hear. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Wait, start talking again. Yeah, I've unplugged my microphone as I use the computer um, microphone. That's okay. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, okay. Well done. So where are we? So number six. It's a bonus. A bonus tip. Uh, number six is the welcome home call. So every single one of your customers that comes back from holiday must get a welcome home call. Not a welcome home card or not a welcome home email because they don't talk. Emails and cards don't talk. Welcome home call. John, how was your holiday? Listen to your customer. Find out about the holiday. And the next question, of course, is, John, where can I send you next? Where is your next holiday going to? And then you carry on the conversation. So that's a great way of building custom retention. But the objection for that from a lot of people is, what if the customer hasn't enjoyed the holiday? Well, then there's even more reason for that welcome home call. So my tip is when you book someone's holiday, you book the welcome home call in your diary for four days after they return. That gives them a little bit of time to settle in. And then you have the conversation 100% of the time. If you take that a step further, if you have customers that haven't booked with you, and they booked with somebody else, give them a welcome home call too. That'll blow their socks off everybody, trust me. So that's a top tip. So that's my um, key top five or top six top tips for improving your sales flow, converting more customers, and also building on your customer retention as well. Thank you, I hope that was useful. I hope it was informative. I hope there was no terminology you maybe didn't understand, but if you do, I'm sure Stephanie will tell me. Um, Stephanie, thank you, is that okay? Yes, no, that was awesome. And I don't think there was any terminology. I think it was all, I think we knew it all. Good, Good. US, Good. Canada, North America, Europe, all knew all those. those as, you, as, you can see, it's, as you can see, it's getting dark here now, so. Yes. Yeah, it's it's into the evening now already for you, um, but yes. And here's my cheers to with the coffee that I have here. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I just want to say really quick that a lot of people are loving this. So um, oh, this is some of the saying. This is a great webinar, and especially um, Danielle had commented. She totally agrees with your number one tip: um, the first conversation over the phone. Yeah. You know, she said there's too many nuances you will miss that will ultimately help you plan the best way for them. So Absolutely. really important. Yeah, and it's just the simple things too of just making that complete contact and yeah. um, getting everything. So really great tips and um so i have a couple questions here for you so Good. i think we should have time for a few so um yeah, one yeah so the first question is from robin and she said i normally send an email with my questionnaire and then i set up a phone call should i do the phone call earlier in the process that's a very good question. Um, and what I said on the, on the call that um, a questionnaire or a card is people would send that and just leave it on its own. Now, on its own, it doesn't really work, but you can both of them can work together. So I would say, yeah, send the questionnaire out and then I'd probably leave it a couple of days before the phone call. And that can be a thank you for your questionnaire. Tell me more about your holiday, because the questionnaire is one thing, but I think the personal approach afterwards because customers love to talk about the holidays, don't they? Especially when they come back, you know. And let's be honest, there's a, and if I can add just one thing here, is that there's something that we that I talk about, it's called the 56 day call. And here's another thing you can do is that there was a survey that the average customer wants to go away 56 days after they return. So there's another call that you can make. So yeah, the questionnaire is fine. I would have the call after the questionnaire, yeah. 
Awesome. And actually that brings me in. Here's another question that um, might help answer that you might've just answered that is yeah. Helen asked how long after a client returns from their holiday, do you call them to say, welcome home one day, right. two days a week? How long would you no, say? I, I wouldn't leave it. I'd leave it about four days because when the first day people get back, they've got to go to get some groceries. They've got to go to the laundrette. The second and third day, if they've had a long journey, they may have a bit of jet lag. Um, so I think four days. If you leave it a week, I think it's too long because after four days, it's still quite fresh in their mind, and they're still they're still be buzzing about it, won't they? So I think four yeah, days. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. That's perfect. Um, so a really, this is a really popular question for many sessions and webinars sure. that we have is a fee. Would you recommend charging a fee for a proposal? It's a very good question. It's been topical in the UK for for many years. Um, I, I, I don't think you should, to be honest, because I'm going to trust my skills as a travel expert. Um, but what I would do is I I always make sure that I'm aware of the value that I have as a travel consultant. And, and I think the key to that is having a very efficient sales flow, um, upselling, but also not discounting. And I think if I'm if I'm confident in my ability as a salesperson, I don't think I need to add a fee on. Um, but I think in the UK, people don't really do it in the UK. I think there was a couple of companies that tried it and it, it didn't really work. It may be different in the States, I don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna trust my skill as a consultant. Um, and I'll I'll load, I'll I'll be honest with my profitability and I'll load it up to make sure that if they're buying, it's worth it because profit margin is so important, especially in travel, it's, you know, making sure our profit margin is, is good. So in a way I'd Perfect. say no, but if you can get away with it, then, then maybe, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, and it's always such a, there's, yeah, charging the fee is always one of the most um, asked yeah. about topics because there's so many ways you can do things and decide things. Yeah. So that makes a lot I, of sense. I incorporate it in my profit. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and focus um, so, on my conversion. Yeah, that is the most important, that one right there. I think um, so. so this question is from Carol. She asks, how do you how do you handle planning for multiple decision makers? So do you decide you meet with them separately or do you try to do everything with a group? Well, these days, I think over the last, last 10 months, uh, Stephanie, that's changed because why not get them all on a video call? And I think that's the best way because historically, it, it was a challenge. Um, and I think what I would have done previously, I would have asked, found out when they're all together. Because, okay, and if you know what, when are you going to be talking to everybody? All right, okay. And then, great. Okay, if you're seeing everybody this weekend, let's fix up a call for Monday. So that way, you're sort of dictating where it goes. Customers are, if you imagine customers are on a piece of string, yeah, sometimes we let them out and sometimes we have to bring them in. But we never cut the string yeah we let them out and we bring them in but i think my advice and it sometimes it takes a bit of bravery i'd ask the customer say why don't we all have a group video call then we can get everyone together and that way it's going to be benefit the customer as well as it bene it's benefiting us yeah that's so a great I, idea i would be bold and, and and i think the reluctance to that sometimes is understanding the technology but and it doesn't, you know, if you if you if you're not using Zoom or, or another company, Zoom could be brilliant for um, for getting customers together. Yeah, no, that's great, and it's a really everyone will remember that too. That's a cool totally. relationship building piece too. Oh, totally. Um, totally. Yeah. So, kind of on that topic of communication. So, Angela asks, what if the customer's preferred method of communication is email? How do you handle that? Yeah, I think, again, there's, no, there's not too much you can do about that. I think um, some customers don't want to talk on the phone. Some customers um, don't want to have a video call because we're all different, aren't we? We're all made different. Um, I would we have to honor the customer's wish. But what I would do with the email, I'd be very keen about how I phrase the email. So in the email, again, I'd use the terminology that we talked about in the presentation about, you know, words, uh, descriptive words, but I would use um, what I said earlier about scarcity. It's one of the principles of influence. So um, this itinerary, it's an amazing itinerary, but I do know there's only a few seats available. Um, and 
that there are other people that have inquired. So I try and create that urgency, the fear of loss. And you can do that in email. It's easier over the phone. But if customers want email, I just I just look at the words. And before I send the email, read it back and, and see how it sounds. But I would be, yeah, I'd look at the, the um, one thing I did um, many years ago, and this might sound terrible. I did a, I did a proposal for somebody and in the email, I, I actually deliberately left the price off. So I meant the customer had to call me and say, Dave, you've left the price off. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do that. Yeah. But there is a tactical way that you could leave a very important bit of information out before you send it. But you don't have to. <laughs> I might get in trouble. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you're testing things out. So just see. What I happens. always. And, that, and that's what in, in a lot of sales is trial and error. And, and some of them being brave and, and trying new things. Um, but yeah, if they, if they want email, don't push it. Just concentrate on the words in those email scarcity. That's great. That's a great advice there. And mm. and this next question, this might have almost the same answer to it, but Cecilia yeah. asks, what do you do if the client doesn't return your phone calls after sending your proposal? Yeah, it's a difficult one. People say to me, how many times should I, should I call the customer? Yeah. Uh, and I think, again, sometimes we just have to accept somebody probably has books somewhere else, somebody isn't ready. After, after three or four, excuse me my phone is no problem. Um, three or four times i'd probably leave it then um and leave it to the customer to come back to you but i think it's in the uk it's called flogging a dead horse <laughs> but i think it's yeah. yeah i'd leave it three or four times and then leave it up to the customer excuse me while i just turn my phone sound off for yeah no problem there was one thing another idea i had when you were talking about the email yeah what you can do again if you have the time if you're sending an email why not record a little video yeah you can, you can go into zoom and just record like a two or three minute video and within that email that you send to the customer why don't send a link to the video so then they're seeing you on a video and that might give them a little bit more because then you've got that interaction and at least they're seeing you aren't they and hearing you so why don't we call a little video and send them a link with the proposal? I love that. That's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah and so easy. And can, you do that can, you, can you embed a video into yeah. the proposal? There yes, you, you can actually. It's magic. Yeah. it's magic. So record a video, embed it in the proposal. There you go. No one's doing that at the moment, I don't think. Yeah, that'll set you apart. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I think I like so. That. We're probably going to take that and use that for um, our trainings yeah. and demos. Mike, you could put a video in here. <laughs> Why not? That, but that makes it much more personal, doesn't it? And, and let's be mm -hmm. honest, you know, the way we're communicating, the, the video calls and webinars, they're not going away. And people had to do them these this year. And I think a lot of people now that are working remote will keep doing it. So I think if we can make it as personal as we can using the technology we have, then it will give us better results. Yeah, and I think you brought this up at the beginning, and I think that's so true that um, because of the virtualness of what we're living in right now, yeah. I noticed that shift too, that there's so many things yeah. that used to be phone calls have turned into video chats, and so totally. it's becoming so much more normal, and yeah. everybody, most people know how to mm. use Zoom at this point, and exactly. it's not uncommon. Yeah, and it enhances the experience, you know, the phone, mm -hmm. going from email to phone is one thing, but going from phone to video, it, it would increase your chance of conversion by about 10%. Yeah, that's awesome. And, yeah. yeah, and um, a question here, going back to talking about that 56 day call idea. Um, so <laughs> Dana had asked, what would you say during that call to get them thinking? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good question. Now, so here's the thing. So there's a survey that said, um, when people come back from a holiday, it's 56 days before they book another one. So, here, so here's the thing. So when you book your welcome home call in the diary, book a 56 day call. And what I would do, so I would ring, so Stephanie's my customer, so I'd ring up and say, hi Stephanie, it's Dave here from um, Travelfly. Um, Stephanie, I was watching, I read an article the other day that said that people when they come back from holiday, want to book another holiday after 56 days guess what today is 56 yes it is so where can i send you and do you know what it's it's a bit of fun um 
And I think, again, it's something a little bit different. And it's a different touch point that somebody might not use already. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of fun. I don't know any other company that uses that. <laughs> but yeah, sure that I love a, that. But even if it isn't true, does it matter? Yeah, it matter? exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's it like, oh, that's just a yeah. Yeah, no, I really like that. Is. Day 56. Day 56. <laughs> And again, it's just and it's something different from normal a normal call that we may ring and say, "Oh, have you booked your holiday this year? Can I help you?" It's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, no, that's such a good idea. Oh man, there's so many good tips and ideas. I know people are taking with them after this. So <laughs> helpful. I'm and trying to. I'm looking. A lot of it is just having that sales flow and recognizing that if you haven't asked for the sale then your sales flow is incomplete. You have to get to the stage where someone says yes or no. If they say no, you've still got a way to go. And exactly. acknowledging to know when, when no is right, now I know that I need to stop now. <laughs> Yeah, just give it time. And and I really yeah. like how you reiterated that no does not, it's not rejection. It just means no. not right now. And and that's really oh, hard to teach. It's the same in, in all walks of life, you know, not just in sales. Mm -hmm. And it's no in many things. Like it's just I'm not quite ready. I'm not quite ready. Yeah. It's that's awesome. And I wish we had more time here. I know I just looked at the clock and I was so like, oh no, we're already coming up. It's, it's gone so quick. You'd have to invite me again then, Stephanie, so we can do another one. Yes, absolutely. We really thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining absolutely. us. Um, I know that, yeah, this has been so helpful. And again, too, there'll be a recording afterwards. So you'll Great. get that. You can share with everybody. But Fantastic. thank you so much again, Dave. Thanks for uh, joining my us. My pleasure, Stephanie. I really enjoyed it. And I hope everybody enjoyed it, too. And, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, stay safe, you know, be successful. And hopefully we'll do another one soon, eh? Yeah, hopefully we'll be chatting again soon. We'll see you Great. later, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. See ya.